It's a great time to be a MacBook Pro user, especially if you have one of the new M1s. This one is the M1 Max 16 inch, and I'm gonna tell you everything that I have on it that we use to get our photo and video production done, all of the essential utilities that get us through the day, and some bonus more specialty software that only a few of you will need, but I'll save that for the very end. Let's start with utilities. And the first one up here is hiding a whole bunch of my other utilities. It's Bartender, and I absolutely love this. It basically just keeps everything clean and tidy at the top of your screen. So if I quit it, you'll see this is what it would look like otherwise. A complete mess, because I've got too much stuff running at once. So I launch Bartender and it's all hidden away and is just revealed when I mouse over. If you've got one of the new MacBook Pros and you don't like the notch, which I don't have a problem with it, but I don't like the color of my background shining through my menu bar. So whatever reason you might have, top notch is a great way to make it all black. So this way the notch just hides behind it and it can also do simple things like add rounded corners. It's especially good for dark mode. It kind of feels like one of those things that should already be in the operating system. Another thing I install right away on every computer is 1Password. Kind of a hard app to give you a tour of, but everyone should have some kind of password manager. There's a lot of good ones out there. There's also LastPass, but find one that fits your needs and start using it because you should have more secure passwords than you probably have now and they should really all be different. Also essential is Dropbox. That's how we share files within our team and also deliver our final projects to clients. And I do have a good tip. Most of the time, it's better to just copy a Dropbox link if you're not working with sensitive data that might be a little too personal or private, like you're not really worried about if this link gets out in the open because it is a public link, but it gives the recipient much more flexibility with what they can do with it. Whereas if you share it with their email, they have to add it to their Dropbox right here. I can just click download and these get saved to my local hard drive, or I can also add them to my Dropbox. All of this is easier than being forced to sync them into your own Dropbox. If we go back to our top menu, another one here is iStat menu. So this is especially useful for YouTube computer reviewers like myself, you can keep an eye on what your CPU is doing or what your memory is being allocated to, all the different apps that are using different amounts of it or what's going on in your network. It's just a helpful way to keep an eye on your computer. And a good use for normal people is to see how much is your current machine using when you do your daily tasks. And that'll give you a better idea of what you might need to buy next time. Like how much RAM do you actually use? A classic app I've been using forever is Chronosync. It is my absolute favorite way to back things up. Basically, you can take any two folders and just make them the same. A lot of people by default will just drag and drop files in the finder, but this lets you do things like synchronize your deletions so that if you remove some of the files that can be applied to the external drive or wherever you're backing up to. And it also has verification. So I use this basic with verification setting. And that just means that the files are being verified that they have actually copied without any errors. So your data isn't being degraded as you back it up. Speaking of drive management, I really like Daisy Disk, which is a way to scan a full drive and kind of figure out how it's being used used. So creative professionals or anybody that generates a lot of data can end up filling up their computer. I recommend getting the biggest drive you can internally, even if you're using external storage, because it gradually fills up. But Daisy Disk lets you track down how you've been filling it. Like what are these big sectors? I can see this one. This is a download of a whole video project that I know is already complete. So I can show it in the finder. And like Daisy just said, this is 112 gigs. I need that space back. So then I can go and just delete that file. For hard drive maintenance that's a little more automated, I'd recommend checking out Clean My Mac. It basically scans your whole system for junk of any kind that might be cluttering up your hard drive. It'll detect malware. I don't need to run Clean My Mac that often. And if you're looking for something like antivirus software, just stop because that's more likely to cause problems than it is to solve any. Clean My Mac is helpful for just basic tidying. One kind of app that can help keep your data safe is a good VPN. And the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, is the best there is out there. When you choose one of their remote servers that you're gonna connect to in just one click or even zero clicks, you set it up automatically, you can be running all your data through a safe and secure server so that nobody is able to access it in between. Or better yet, I can jump to the United Kingdom and be able to access all of my favorite shows. So if you have any shows or video games or any kind of content that is inaccessible from where you are, NordVPN can make it really easy to see that content and quickly. There's no bandwidth throttling, so you have full speed access to the internet. And thanks to NordLinks, that is a very fast connection. So go click that link below. It's gonna take you to nordvpn.com slash Stallman. Sign up for a two year plan and you're going to get a bonus gift and a huge discount. Thanks again to NordVPN. 
Now let's do some boring but essential ones. So my web browser of choice is always Safari. It is very well optimized for the Mac. Your battery is gonna last a lot longer. You can use Chrome. Certain things only work in Chrome. And if you need them, obviously you can use it. But if you don't need those specialty tools, Safari is a safe default. For my calendar, I use the built-in Apple calendar. For my notes, I use the built-in Apple notes. And for music, I use Apple Music. Oh, and last time I did this, everybody asked, what email client do I use? I use Gmail in the web. That's why there's no, there's no mail app. I just don't like any of them that much. They've all kind of had complications. But now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's talk about creative apps, starting with Adobe Lightroom, which I've been using forever, and I've done a lot of tutorials about it and Photoshop. But at the moment, things are kind of a mess because I've actually been switching back and forth between Lightroom and more and more, I'm using Capture One. Capture One does a better job with a few things, especially their color processing. I think the default image that comes out of it looks better. And what they really do better is tethering. If you go to any professional photo studio, everybody is using Capture One to tether. It is the standard for it. So at the moment, I'm still jumping back and forth, which isn't ideal. Um, at some point, <laughs> I might have to make a final choice, but I, I do recommend taking a look at both because there are advantages and disadvantages to each. By the way, I do have Lightroom presets, link in the description. And quick tip, I love the new subject masking and sky masking. It, it just seems to work automatically within Lightroom. And then all of a sudden you're able to just target your adjustments either just to the person or the sky, which is something you need to adjust all the time on its own. And it does an amazing job. Adobe Photoshop is still what I use if I need to you know, manipulate pixels directly. It's uh, the de facto standard and I have just such built-in muscle memory. I can do a lot really quickly in it. When I'm editing videos, most of that work happens in Final Cut Pro. I absolutely love it. I've done tons of tutorials for it. So here, instead of telling you any tips, I'm gonna give you a few extra plugins that I highly recommend everybody downloads. The most essential one, I think, is Add Motion. These are just very basic tools that should already be included in Photoshop that just let you do simple animations and smoothly do things like say zoom in or zoom out in a way that looks more pleasing than you can do by default in Final Cut. Also worth checking out is Motion VFX, which has a lot of great titles. They also have great transitions. There is tons of stuff there. Simple drag and drop ways to manipulate your image and make it look like super professional or make it look more grainy, like film emulation and 3D titles and all sorts of stuff. Whenever I have more advanced color work to do, I use DaVinci Resolve, which you could use as your full-time editor. It's amazing. I just find myself working faster in Final Cut Pro, but there's some color stuff that you can do in Resolve that is impossible to do in any other software. It's, it's really remarkable what they have built here. When I have any precise audio editing to do, I still use Audition for that. I absolutely love it as an app, but now most of the podcast gets edited in Final Cut Pro, so the main thing Audition gets used for now is the match loudness feature, which when I run it, it basically just brings all the levels to the same place. It's like a form of compression. It's a little bit of a mystery of how it's doing it, but I find it does a great job of matching different tracks to all sound the same volume. And if you're making a podcast, you should be targeting it to negative 16 LUFS, which is the standard. The other audio software that almost everything gets run through is Isotope RX-8. Um, you can use whichever version you want. It usually goes on sale like once a year, um, but it is absolutely amazing for its noise removal. It's just really transparent. Like you don't hear that the audio has been processed and does a great job of taking any type of noise out. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. This is some of the stuff that it took me a long time to find, but is super useful if you happen to need it. So the first one is Forecast. It lets you set timestamps in a standard that different podcast players will recognize. You can drag art to each chapter so that it can be changing as people are listening. It lets you do some of the more advanced stuff that is supported by almost every podcast player, but it's hard to do without this software. And then there's Hedge, which is basically an industry standard way of transferring data so that you have verification that everything has been transferred. Again, you don't get that in Finder, so Hedge will help you with that. And then it will create a report of exactly what was copied so that you can confirm to the client client or yourself that all your files are safe. Another one from the makers of Hedge that I just picked up is Foolcat, which lets you generate reports. You just drag and drop the folder that has all of your video files in it, and it just creates either a PDF or an HTML file that shows you everything you shot. It has all the file names, it has thumbnails, so you can go through your shot list at the end of the day and make sure you got everything that you needed. 
a must have app for any aspiring DIT. And this one's essential for anybody that spends a lot of time on YouTube, that's Downy. And it just lets you download any YouTube video. So I can just copy this link. I can paste it into Downy and downloads the local copy of the YouTube video. And I do this all the time when I'm editing in old videos into new videos, which is a very lazy way to do it, but it's quick. And by the way, this is the video that you should be watching next. It is my recommendation for all the best games on the Mac, which can be hard to find. Like as a Mac gamer, there's not a lot out there. So that's the next video you should go watch. Click on it right now and I'll see you over there guys. Oh, and in case anybody's wondering, this shirt is from the podcast ATP. I think they're all sold out. So I don't know if you can buy them anymore, but Google if you still can. I know they reprint them sometimes.